Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a discovery that was actually made back in 2019, but it basically took 5 years to officially confirm. A discovery coming from a star system approximately 635 light years away from planet Earth, and a discovery that demonstrates the incredible technology we now possess to see objects really really far away. And as you can probably tell from the title, it's essentially a discovery of an extremely distant moon. A moon around an object you see right here known as WASP-49b, a distant Saturn-like planet that seems to possess a volcanic moon potentially very similar to Jupiter's Io, a moon very likely covered in a lot of different volcanoes, but a moon that finds itself in extremely unusual, very hostile conditions and whose existence is maybe not very easy to explain. And so let's talk about this discovery in a little bit more detail, and more importantly, discuss how all of this was even confirmed. But first, let's briefly discuss exomoons and what we know about them so far. Now naturally, based on the observations from the solar system, we kind of expect a lot of exomoons out there. For example, as of today, over 300 moons have been already confirmed in the solar system, with almost every planet out there possessing a moon. And because moons tend to form naturally even around asteroids, it's fair to assume that we should be finding a lot of these very likely around most exoplanets we've discovered so far. But the problem is that, unlike finding planets, finding moons is exceptionally challenging. Not only do they basically produce almost no shadow when passing in front of a star, they also don't produce much wobble, mostly because their masses are expected to be very low. And so as a result, discovering exomoons have actually been a bit of a challenge. In the last decade or so, there have only been a few candidates and nothing officially confirmed just yet. For example, one of the more popular ways to try to find these objects is by using various transit methods. One example is what's known as transit variation method or transit timing variation. It's essentially when you look at the star and you see these transits of a planet, but every transit happens at slightly different times as if something was shifting the planet just a little bit. And this is actually how some of the exomoons have been potentially discovered before, but the problem here is that these transit variations can also come from neighboring planets that could be hiding in the star system. And so, as a result, nothing official has been confirmed yet using any of these observational methods we normally use for planets. Okay, maybe not entirely true. There's actually one example, based on gravitational microlensing method, that did witness one object, specifically a rogue planet, that potentially had a moon. But because this is technically a rogue planet, the moon around this object is a little bit different. In a sense that it's not really an exoplanet, because it's just not orbiting any star. But there's definitely at least one example. Although in every single case, with every single detection, there are usually alternative explanations that usually make just as much sense. And so, as a result, as of mid-2024, there have not been an official confirmation of any exomoon out there. And that's maybe until, I guess, now. Here we get a very unexpected discovery based on the observation of gas emissions. And specifically emissions coming from this hypothetical moon. And so here, by observing this for a very long time, it's actually been almost seven years now, scientists discovered that this unusual object, and specifically this planet, known as WASP-49b, seems to contain a really large gas of sodium in orbit around this planet. Now this is, as you can see, a relatively hot planet because it's really close to the parent star. As a matter of fact, a single orbit here takes just over 2.8 days. But as far back as 2019, when I actually made the first video about this, scientists were able to see this unusual cloud around the planet, suggesting something was orbiting it and suggesting that something was spewing out a lot of sodium. Now because in this case this is a gas giant, similar to Saturn, and also because it's orbiting a G-type star similar to our Sun, first of all this was actually a really exciting star system, because it was kind of Sun-like, but second of all, since these objects are mostly made out of hydrogen and helium, there was no mechanism to explain how so much sodium could be produced around the planet. And while we know quite a lot about these sodium emissions from the solar system, Here's actually a really intriguing image by Dr. Sebastian Voltmer that shows us the emissions from Mercury. It actually makes Mercury appear as some kind of a comet, but in reality this is sodium escaping the surface of Mercury, visible from far away. And similar shells exist around other planets, but naturally they're not always sodium. But for a typical gas giant to have something similar, there's just no way to explain this. 
we don't actually know of any mechanism that would suddenly release sodium from a planet like Saturn or Jupiter. And because nothing similar has been discovered around other similar objects, this was obviously a very unique discovery. But because this is science, we still had to have more evidence, as right now this was just a hypothesis. Maybe because this planet was so close to the star, there was some kind of a mechanism that allowed for this to happen. And technically, it wasn't even just sodium. It was also additional metals, including magnesium and iron, which did suggest something unusual happening here. And a lot of these initial observations started to also confirm that none of this was gravitationally bound to the planet and was potentially escaping into the outer star system. But there was one example we could use from right here in the solar system as well. We know for a fact that Io releases something very similar, but in much smaller amounts. And we know that Io does produce a sodium tail visible from very far away, which even creates certain effects in Jupiter's magnetosphere. So for example, in these observations by NASA, you can definitely see the sodium ring produced by Io around Jupiter. And when it comes to Jupiter, some of these clouds can expand so much, they are even thousand times greater than the planetary radius. And so a similar mechanism was expected here as well. Because for some reason, something was producing 100,000 kilograms of sodium every single second. And if this was from a planet or a star, there was really no way to explain it. But like I mentioned, it took five years to confirm this. And the best evidence came from observing how this gas moves. For example, here in the first observation, they discovered that this gas clearly increased in size, as if something was producing more gas at certain points, because maybe of some kind of a major emission. A volcano in this case would definitely explain it. But much more importantly, this seems to have happened some distance away from the planet. So basically, it would be very difficult to explain this if it was not a moon. But a much stronger evidence came from the observations of the velocity of the gas as it orbited the star. Here, sometimes it appeared to be moving a little bit faster than the planet, in a way that it appeared to be orbiting the planet at a distance. So almost exactly the same to what we see around Jupiter. And so even though the planetary atmosphere was moving in one direction, this gas was actually moving in the opposite direction. And if it came from the planet, it would make absolutely no sense. Which essentially provided enough evidence for this to be a volcanic moon around a distant Saturn-like object. But an extreme moon that we've never seen before and cannot even imagine. Here, a single orbit only took approximately 8 hours, and that's on top of the planet orbiting the star every 2.8 days. Intriguingly, having this orbit means that this moon is almost at the edge where it should not be a moon anymore and should technically become rings. For example, for Saturn, the D ring orbits every 5 hours, the C ring every 7 hours, and the B ring every 8 to 10 hours. So by having a moon so extremely close to this planet presents us with a bit of a mystery on how exactly can it exist and what exactly is this moon made out of. Obviously, if its density is really high, it's going to be able to survive much closer to the planet, but at the moment, nobody knows. And so in this case, for all we know, this is actually some kind of a almost like a terrestrial planet-sized moon with relatively high density, but extreme conditions on the surface. And since it's losing so much mass every second, due to the squeezing from the planet's gravity and the effects from the star, at some point it's most likely going to completely disintegrate and might actually become a ring system after all. And so right now this is actually one of the more intriguing discoveries, not only when it comes to exomoons, but just actual discoveries in astronomy. A mysterious moon that's kind of difficult to explain and that seems to produce very similar effects to what Io does around Jupiter. But at least for now, that's all we know. We'll probably get even more observations in the future and potentially even more resolutions. Until then though, check out some of the previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.